Welcome, welcome to the WebDriver method section of this course. This is the other extremely critical section of the course because besides identifying web elements, here we're going to learn how to actually interact with our web elements so that we can perform actions on them after we locate them. In this section, you will learn how to take basic actions on elements, how to get information from elements, and advanced element actions. You will also learn advanced browser actions such as executing JavaScript, handling cookies, managing files, handling Windows frames, and working with alerts. So in order to interact with elements, what are the methods that you have available? Well, so to interact with an element, first, you have to find the element, which is exactly what we discussed in the last section, which is where we find the element. After we find the element, we can then interact with it with one of the methods, click method, which you have already seen from Selenium WebDriver. This right here is called find and act because this action right here locates the element and then this one actually interacts with the element. This right here is called find, store and act because we find the element and we store it inside of a variable and then we use that variable to interact with the element. This method is usually the preferred method if you're going to be doing multiple actions on an element. Let's say, for example, you want to type some text into an element and then also click on it. This is the method that you actually want to prefer because finding an element is a web driver request. This is extremely important when we start executing test automation in the grid and running in clouds, which almost all of us are going to be doing in the future. And so it's really important to only make as few find element calls as we can. So whenever you're going to be doing multiple in an actions on elements, such as typing in keys, such as making sure that the element is displayed before you click it or that it's displayed before you interact with it, you're going to call this once and store your element into a variable and then you're going to perform multiple actions with it and that will perform only a single web request, which is extremely, extremely critical to your cloud test automation execution. Here are some of the methods that you can use to interact with an element. The click, which you have already seen before, which is just simply a click on an element. You have also a clear method that you can use to interact on an element, right? For example, you may imagine a text field that has some predefined text in it that says, type in your username here. You can click on that element. You can clear it before typing in your text. Then you also have the send keys method. The send keys method will allow you to actually send a string of keys into a specific element, such as an input, right? For maybe entering a username or a password. And finally, you can submit on an element. Submitting on an element means you can submit a form. For example, you fill out a username and a password, then you can submit on a button so that the entire form can submit, or you can even do that on a search field. For example, maybe you typed in a search string into Google. Now you can find the form element, or you can find the button element and you can use the submit method which is pretty much the same thing as a click. Those were element interactions. Now, what if we want to get back information from our elements to, to decide what action we want to take afterwards? So there are several methods for getting back information. There is the get text, right? Which will provide you the text of that element. You can get a tag name, which will tell you what is the tag name of this element. You can get an attribute from that element, which is extremely useful for potentially deciding what is the state of an element. Now, you may be interacting with a React application or an Angular application, and they use attributes a lot. And so you might be able to get an attribute such as element is visible attribute that tells maybe has a flag such as true or false. And then you can use that attribute to decide whether the element is visible or not. 
You can also use the is displayed method, which is natively out of the box coming from Selenium WebDriver that will tell you where, where the element is displayed and also is enabled that will tell us whether an element such as a button is enabled for us to interact with it. Now be careful, these two methods may not always work depending how the HTML is implemented. So it's important whenever using these methods to make sure that when you use them, that they actually tell you the correct state of the element. A lot of times they will work, but sometimes they may not. And so it's just important to double check. For example, when you use is displayed, does it actually tell you that the element is displayed before? And for example, if the element is not displayed, if you try it, does it actually return you a false? Now let's talk about some advanced element actions. So advanced element actions involve really mouse and keyboard actions. We can do those using Selenium WebDriver. Not only can we perform the standard operations you already saw, but we can do stuff like hovering and doing keyboard keys and all that kind of stuff. Now, this is how it's done. First, you need to locate the element that you want to interact with, and we're storing it inside of a variable here. Then we do advanced element interactions using the actions class that is part of Selenium's WebDriver API. We create a new actions class as such, passing in your driver. After you have that driver, you can use a fluent API to build the actions that you want to create. So for example, here we're using the action to click an element right? This is the same as our mouse click, but we're using the actions API here to click an element. And then we're building that action because this is using a fluent interface. And then we are performing that action until you click until you use the perform method, the action will not actually occur. So here are some of the major mouse actions that you can do on web elements. So take a look here. We've got a click where you will just click on the middle of an element and you just pass in your web element. We can do a click and hold. So if for whatever reason you need to hold down your mouse on an element, you can use the click and hold method again, passing in an element on where you want to perform the click and hold. We can do a context click. A context click is nice because it will move to the element and then it will click on it. We can perform a double click, which is exactly what it sounds like. We can also do a drag and drop. A drag and drop is very common for UI test automation. And so what you can do here is grab an element, right? And you can, this is the element that you're going to pick up and you're going to drag it to some specific target, which will be another web element. You can also do a drag and drop by, so you can pick up an element and drag it to some specific location. You can move to an element. A lot of times what will happen in pages where they are dynamic, a page may not be rendered until you scroll to an element. A an element may be below the fold, below the visible region of a page. And so that's when you may want to do a such, something such as a move to element where you move to the element first and make sure that it's in your view of the screen and then you can start interacting with it. Actually, a very common error that many students and the many automation engineers get is element not clickable exception because they try to click or interact with an element before it's actually in the viewport. And so a very common solution to that is to move to the element first before interacting with it. Uh, this is another move to element method that you also have available where you can pass in the element that you want to move to, and then you can pass in the coordinates of how far you want to move to that element. And then finally, you have the release method. The release method will, if you, ha for example, are doing a click and hold and you're holding down on an element, at that point you can do a release to release the mouse 
at that element and stop clicking and holding. There are also keyboard interactions. Keyboard interactions are extremely helpful if, for example, you cannot interact with an element using standard keyboard standard mouse commands. Now, I do really want to caution you here that keyboard commands are extremely, extremely flaky and should be used as a last resort in your test automation. However, I have been in a situations where you cannot do stuff with regular mouse actions and so keyboard commands come in very handy, but you should work very hard to make sure that your keyboard commands are the last thing that you're ever using and they should not be the first thing that you're trying to use. However, there are these actions that you may want to perform. There's the key down command, which is, will simply press the key down. So if you want to send a bunch of characters, uh, for example, like pressing the enter key or pressing the up arrow, or maybe you want to pass in a function key, you can just use the key down. Now, after you use a key down character, you have to do the key up character so that once the key is pressed, it will not be released until you do a key up. And then you can also even do the send keys, which is exactly just like a send keys that you've seen with a total input box. And here you can send keys to any element, right? Maybe, for example, you want to send keys to the entire browser, such as opening up developer tools. You can do a send keys here by passing in those keys and passing them over to an entire browser versus just passing into like an input box, for example. And here are some code examples of what we would do to, for example, do a hover, right? So we have our action element. We will move to the element, passing in the element that we want to move to we will build the action and we will perform it. Here's an example of a drag and drop. You'll have, we'll have our action class. We'll do a drag and drop method that's provided to us by Selenium. We'll take element one and drag it over to element two, and then we'll build and perform. Remember that nothing happens until we call the perform method. Then we can do a click pause and release. For example, you can click and hold an element pause it for a specific interval, and then you release that click and hold, and then you perform the operation. You always have to perform again. This is using a Fluent API where we can build this into a very long string, and until we call the perform method, that string will not be performed. All right, I hope that you are ready because have I got an awesome quiz for you. I worked on this one for a while to try and exercise all of the new skills that you have learned so far. Let's go ahead and go over it. So all of the requirements for the quiz are going to be here at this Git gist that you can find. I'll also, of course, supply you the URL in your course resources, but I'm going to go through it here as well. So you're going to give me five tests. Each test is going to have separate requirements. Test number one, you're going to navigate to this URL. You're going to select option one from the drop down, and then you're going to assert that option one is selected and option two is not selected. Let me show you that manually. So you're navigating here, coming here, selecting option one, making, and then doing two assertions, option one selected, option two not selected. That's test number one. Test number two, you're going to go navigate to this URL. You're going to hover over the first image, and then you're going to assert that there is text displayed below the first image, which says name user one like this. Let me show you. So here are the hovers. You're going to hover over this image and then see the text there, there that says name colon user one. You're going to assert that that text is actually visible. Next, you're going to go to this URL right here. You're going to right click in the box. You're going to close the alert. And I know you've never dealt with alerts before. So I'm giving you a hint here how you can accept the alert after it has popped up. So 
this is what you're going to do. See this box here? You're going to come here and you're going to right click. See this alert that comes up? That's how you're going to dismiss it. And by dismissing it, actually, that is how you know your test will pass. Because if you try to dismiss it and the alert is not there, your test is going to fail. Next, you're going to navigate to this URL right here. You're going to send the right arrow key into the input box and then you're going to assert that this text is returned from the element. So let's take a look. You're coming here. You're putting your cursor in there. You're going to enter the right key, right arrow key, which I did right now. And you're asserting that you got back this text right there. Finally, you're going to navigate to this URL right here. You're going to find an element with text clickable icon. You're going to assert that it's href attribute is equal to this URL right here. Then you're going to get a CSS value called background origin. And then you're going to assert that it equals padding box. Let me show you exactly what that looks like. So here is that URL. You're going to find this clickable icon. And actually, since I've never shown you anything about CSS before, let me explain about it a little bit more. So as you can see, I am now hovering over the clickable icon on the right hand side. You can see all of the CSS values. If you come here and click computed, it will actually show you a bunch of CSS values that can be that have been used to generate the style for this clickable icon link. So we are actually looking for this one here. So this is the actually the uh, key and this is the value of that CSS. So we're passing in this key and we're expecting back this value. Let me just double check that I'm talking. Yep, exactly. And so that's exactly what we're going to be asserting. You should already know the method for getting a CSS value from an element. And so that should not be a problem. Okay, cool. So go ahead and enjoy. Give me five tests. Spend a good amount of time on this. This is going to take you a little bit of time. It's going to take some effort, but you should know how to do this from this point forward. And then when you come back, I'll show you the answer.